Art. Yeah, say we live. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Black to hip hop, back at it again. You already Don't... know. <laughs> Arthur, he's our guru here tonight. And then uh, there's me, the ultimate fan of hip hop, old school hip hop, especially. So we're going to get right on topic because everybody kind of discussing. <clears throat> discusses this is probably one of the oldest arguments that or the mm -hmm. other that uh, people have uh, and um, uh, and it's about who's the best in the game any game you know it don't even we talk hip hop today but right, right. Um, you know uh, people always want to know who is the they can just having that argument uh, anyway so we discuss it and see today so um uh here it is so so we know we didn't double our efforts or when we did double our efforts i'm gonna let you start with your two then i'm gonna give two <clears throat> and then you give two more we're gonna go back and forth like that uh, all right all right so so all right so to get it and to get the people a little background on what we're going into now and like like monique say you know we're we're always we're always having discussions about who's the best who's the best who's the best mc and um those conversations would never die. And as generations change, you know, ideas and things to change. Cause we see a lot of uh, top 10 lists that I think are very incorrect, but you know, that's just me. But what, what, what we're doing is first, we're going to give you all our seven personal favorite MCs that we'll put in the van and travel around that we think could destroy everybody else, seven MCs. And then we're going to come, going to kind of either, either collaborate or give, uh, our own separate list of the top five MCs who we think should be deserving of the greatest of all time. So, uh, I, all right. So, off top, my first two in my van, Nas and Rakim, off top. Okay. That's why. That's why I'm going. Nas and Rakim, they go ahead and jump in the van, and we our van got windows. Okay. Okay. So that's not uh, one and two. That's just saying, you know, that's top. Yeah, that's you know out of your top you know yeah five. out of my right like if i you know if i if you give me yeah. any seven mcs of all time that i get to pick this is my personal favorite that i can put together and band together and create something that can make songs go battle people and all these things nice and rock I'm, I'm not saying that these two are the greatest of all time but what i'm saying is these are the first two that i would pick okay so uh that's a good that's good right there because both of those both of those individuals uh as uh mcs were on my list too mm -hmm. so let's just go ahead and rock that and um now i know uh <clears throat> why nas uh is on the list for me mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me uh coming from the era in which uh in the age group I was at when um, listening to Nas uh, first come on the scene, um, the hip hop and rap and, uh, you know, in particular was developing and evolving and changing. Uh, you know, we went through uh, of when it first coming on the scene and sounding real, uh, you know, grimy, uh, but yeah. uh, raw and, uh, just something beautiful. We knew it was going to be beautiful uh, to incorporating all kind of um, uh, musical effects and all that kind of stuff and, you know, real lyricists. And Nas came around at a time when, um, you know, that was on a what I consider a lull, like we probably mm -hmm. are now. So, uh, and uh, he was rapping about some higher consciousness. Uh, content right right so uh that's re that's the reason why nas personally makes my list um yeah. and uh rakim he was just uh on that same caliber uh just a a, a, a overall good mc paid in full you know I right right <laughs> i mean nas nas makes my list because i think he is a complete mc um Whatever you need your rapper to do, Nas can do. Um, Nas can freestyle. Nas can rap 
just give you that straight up. I'm gonna attack you rap with no bars. Rap can make Nas can make songs. Nas can tell stories. Nas can uh, talk. Nas can talk about anything. And like, like the song Rewind, his song Rewind, when he told the story backwards, that just that just blew my mind, man. I'm like, I'm like, wow, like this dude really just told the whole story backwards, and the story makes sense, but it still flowed as a song. Mm -hmm. And you know, that to me is what an MC should. Now I'm not saying every, I'm not saying other rappers should be like Nas, but I think when we talk about greatest MCs of all times, we should be looking at um, complete MCs, complete rappers who can bring more than just a certain thing to the table that a, a certain pe person may like. And now when we talk about Rakim, like Rakim was the architect of the style. So, you know, if you're gonna big up Nas, then you cannot, you can't big up Nas and not big up Rakim when he's the architect of the style. Like these these complex rhyming styles and and, this, and just the way that things are, are, are rapped now didn't exist before Rakim. So we need to go be able to go back and look at that and, and acknowledge, but it, even separately from that, like Rakim was just cold. Like he was just a cold MC. I mean, he could he could give you everything that you that you wanted and, and he didn't curse. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so he had he had a, enough consciousness and enough control in what he was saying to be able to tell you a story without having to come out come out of his character. And I think that's what uh to me that's a that's a mark of a good MC when you can stay within your lane. Like you don't have to come out of your lane to seek greatness and you can be great within your own lane. Uh, that's awesome uh, analogy of uh, um, Rockham's uh, MC career um, uh, because I think you're you absolutely hit that the nail on. Now, it, just just to further expound on Nas, it was Nas who did an interview I think um, in two I think recently in 2012 or 2013, in which he was asked uh, about his top five MCs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you are familiar with his answer to that question, but uh, he danced around it. Like I noticed that when I, you know, went to go do a little bit of research, you know, who do other MCs put in a top? Tier? Right. And so when Nas answered that question, just like many of the other rappers, they dance around it a little bit. Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, answer to that question was really uh, simple. But uh, but made a lot of sense, and it was that you know hip hop is so brand new, rap like this is so brand new that um, it's there's no of all time. Right, right. I mean, I, I say that all the time. I I because I don't even though you know we are going to put a, a list together, but I I truly don't think that we have a greatest rapper of all time because it's so many MCs who bring such greatness to the table. Like, how are we, how are we calculating this greatness? Like, you know, most lists have Biggie as number one. Like, why is Biggie number one? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it, because, is it, he's number one because he's your favorite rapper? Because if we really analyze and break down Biggie, we can find a lot of deficiencies that Biggie didn't bring to the table as far as when we analyze and, uh, everything that an MC should do. Like Biggie, in my opinion, one of the things is Biggie, Biggie wasn't that deep. Like his content, he didn't have that much depth in content, you know, as compared to it, DMX deeper than, than Biggie, you know, and so. Now that that doesn't take away his greatness, but if that's an attribute, if we if we have to, uh, if we made a, a a concise and consistent list of attributes and things and and requirements that we have to have rappers to have to be considered the greatest, how would some of our personal favorite rappers stack up, and will we be able to take our personal feelings out of that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and we and then Nas would tell you because I think he said it in that same interview. <clears throat> that we should not take our personal because everybody's list is just personal. It's right. probably personal attestation on what their ears were ready to hear. I'm and I'm expounding on his words at that time or ready to receive. So um, you know, in that respect, he did have um, you know a list, and uh, you know I don't know if I, if I was more surprised to see that LL Cool J was on that list. Well, well, well. See, me and me and Pat talk about this all the time, because think about it. I right. LL Cool J. If 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 we, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, long, I feel like 
he's the one rapper that really meets the requirement for greatest of all time. I mean, like because said it though, because L said that, or because it's true. Because it's true, you know. And it, and and you know, I've I've never seen LL Cool J's name on the greatest of all time list from uh, people who are not from his generation. Okay, <laughs> you know, and if you but but think but think about it, Monique. Like we might not we might not buy the album, but if LL dropped right now, he can go platinum. LL went platinum in four different decades. LL was a force to be reckoned with. Like lyrically, he could tell stories. He can give you all types. He can make all types of sun. Like if it wasn't for LL, we wouldn't have melody. Okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying. In these songs, he is the first one to to make rapping to women cool. Oh, yeah. And now, and now, if you don't make one of those songs, you're not gonna be on the radio. That's right. Even the hardest rappers out there make try to make a. Uh, you I know. mean, you know, when he when, and and of course when he came out with it, he got clowned and all these things here. But you know, I I just feel like LL has the longevity. He has the talent. He has he has the he has the catalog because a lot of people catalog ain't messing with LL catalog. Okay. So he has that. So if we if we really want to talk about one of the few that we could say okay well we can we can at least give him because he had the requirements to be labeled as the greatest of all time okay all right so so, so was he was he on your list by the way uh of my of my personal seven yeah no he's not on my list of personal seven okay you just gave a compelling argument <laughs> No, I mean, but I, I I like to tell the truth. You know, I, I I try not to be the person who who just tries to stick with I like this and and because I like this, this is how it should be. No, I, I try to tell the truth. You got to give LL his props. Like I'm not I'm not a fan of LL, but the man deserves his props. Okay, so now <clears throat> on that same topic, we're gonna get back to our list. I know we got two more two more mm-hmm. of what who we on our personal list of MCs that we wanna. Um, hear that, but on that same respect, LL's content that you had alluded to it earlier was uh, it his audience were women. Uh, he told love stories, you know, where he rapped love stories and or romance or something like that, you know, some type of connection. Uh, he was besides he was the exact opposite of too short. Yeah, <laughs> in terms of. <laughs> Of, of what they were rapping with on the spectrum of, of relationships. So <clears throat> his content, his messages didn't lack, <clears throat> excuse me, his messages may have been considered lacking depth, just like Biggie. Mm-hmm. But Biggie makes this list on top of, you know, uh, some very conscious rappers mm-hmm. that that uh, tell very complex stories. How this crosses over into other areas is that we just talked about this. Uh, we, you and I have had the opportunity to talk about this subject, but Tyler Perry versus uh, uh, Spike Lee. Right. So what is it that uh, LL Cool J versus, uh, you know, Nas, what's the difference there? Um, of course, like um, first, I I don't I don't they can't be compared because they're two different type of rappers. So I I don't I don't want to I I want to preface that because what I'm saying is not necessarily to compare them to, but Nas brings a level of consciousness to the game that LL did. LL brings a, a LL was able to open doors for rappers like Nas to exist, because if we didn't have LL, we wouldn't have Nas doing belly, which wouldn't lead to the things that Nas was able to do now. And so, uh, and in that respect, because I don't I don't look at LL as one of those MCs that will be seen as that okay when we really get down to talk about the consciousness aspect or or the empowerment of our people through hip hop um through the through the messages LL is not in that conversation but LL can be in the conversation of empowerment through images 
okay. because you know being one of the early rappers to be able to cross over from the music to the film mm -hmm. and now now if we're just if we're keeping the con the conversation strictly on rhymes mm -hmm. if this is where we're going then no i mean we're not we're not really we don't even really need to talk about ll because it's that's not what he that's not the type of rapper he is so right. it's not even fair to even bring him into that conversation because that's like that's like arguing about squirrels and rabbits and okay you know so you don't think it hurt his overall image and career or stack on the list because he did he wasn't more in depth with the content to true to tr true blue hip hop heads yes to everybody else no okay okay uh all right uh what i said i was very surprised by the way to see that ll was on nas list and i had an even more profound respect um for ll cool j's career after i seen that he was on his list so mm -hmm. you know uh just because he was on nas list and, yeah. and it's one of those things where i respect levels and nas's expertise is it's right music is his student at the game right and so uh and, and more people need to understand that you know um his ear is listening to something we can't even begin to hear when he's um uh listening right to the, right right uh, right because it's, it's just like it's just like riding on the train with somebody who puts trains together and they're they're listening and hearing things and they can oh man this ain't right oh man that's working fine you just sitting there like it's all squealing noise yeah <laughs> absolutely Right. Okay, so we got we okay, let's get directly into our next top two. All right. All right. So my next two that's in my van with me is Scarface and Andre three thousand. I had to break it bring it back down to the south. You know, my, my southern southern influence is just like I I found out I found out by outcast by accident. Um because my brother, uh, my brother used to always buy Outkast music, but never really let me listen to it. So I really start. I saw this cover, and I, I it was a weird word. Not in the weird. I thought the word said aquanimi. It's like aquanimi. What the hell is aquanimi? You know, aquanimi. Like who, who would listen to something called aquanimi? That was just going through my mind. But then I saw how big. But I like. But the dude got dude that's a pimp, and that I was in my look pimp stage at that time so but you no know, you start listening to outcast and you like damn and i first i just want to say this they would never that would not be an outcast without big boy and people need to stop slighting big boy on his respect and his due because um big boy gave just as much contribution and creativity to outcast and andre 3000 and big boy just as dope mc now of course we think we of course we 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 know Three thousand is, is a little better, but Big Boy earned he deserved his respect as an MC, and people need to stop overlooking him. But you know, but as an individual MC, three thousand just he just cold man, and he just he's on some he's on some other level. Like three thousand has metaphors that you you still thinking about ten years later that you oh that's that's what he meant. <laughs> it's like and like another you know another complete MC to me. Three, like give you any and everything. I'm not as much of a fan of the singing, but the but he's good at what he does. You know, um, he's good at bringing to the table what he brings. But just one of the dopest MCs you've ever heard. Like this, the story and um, uh, the art of storytelling with um, Susie Screw had a partner named Sasha Thumper. And Sasha got found in the back of the school with a needle in her arm. Like, like when he's telling that story, because me growing up in the South, um, as he's talking about, you know, playing spinner, uh, having a little spinning nights and outside playing the playing the freeze tag or the hide and go get outside. And he land up on the lights because it's cool enough to be outside two in the morning. And and it just it it took it was, I was able to go back into a childhood. And I love artists who can give me stories that can make me close my eyes. Like that's one of the things I love about Biggie. It's Biggie, so he give very vivid stories. You can close your eyes and just right. just drift out. And, and Scarface, another talking about storytellers like Scarface. Um, like I like put him on the sun with anybody, and he either gonna he either gonna match them or be better than them. I've heard like I've heard him on the sun with all the greats, and if not all the greats, almost all the greats. And Scarface is not 
a slouch at all great storyteller great emotion he gives it to you like you need it once again another another mc where you can close your eyes as he's rhyming and and feel not only see the story but feel the emotion his the the voice the, this the crackling in his voice just kind of takes you there and and like scarface just has that it to me another complete mc but He's not that mainstream type of guy, so a lot of people probably won't have him on that list. But Scarface, hey, 3,000, y'all in the van with Nas and Rakim, and I think right now I got a pretty strong team. You know, uh, that, that is a pretty strong team. And I want to say this about Scarface, too, uh, because you're right, he doesn't have that same type of uh, uh, exposure or audience that, um, uh, you know, Andre had that career that they had. Even I believe he had that career because we listen. I listened to him, but uh, they went real, you know, mainstream on it. And uh, but he definitely deserves that uh, that designation and that respect uh, in his field. Um, so I had Andre three thousand, uh, pretty much for all the same reasons why you have him. Uh, but he also kind of delved into that real creativity. Like it would be like watching an artist make a picture. Uh, or paint, uh, watching a painter paint a picture, uh, and he definitely, uh, you know, painted pictures. And you realize that he could take one rap and rap to three different people mm-hmm. with one rap. <laughs> you know, say with one, you know, you know, and and be talking to three people different separately. And I think that's one of the um, pinnacles of being uh, having the gift of spoken word. Yeah. Uh, is that you can uh, get so many different backgrounds of people uh, within the, in, in my case, I care more about the backgrounds of people within the, uh, the, the black communities that hip hop was born out of and rap was born out of. But uh, then to be able to uh, have one person standing on stage and creating something that can relate to all different types of individuals, that's, pretty good up there. So Andre Townsend definitely make that list. And then um, I picked Kendrick Lamar. Okay. And the reason why I picked him and I put, I've actually put them to give them two together, Andre 3000 and Kendrick Lamar is because I believe that uh, no limits type of rapping where I'm going to just go in and on a story and um, you know, kill it with metaphors and uh, symbolances and things like that. Uh, Andre 3000 had to have had some influence on Kendrick Lamar. Of course. And um, and so he has that same style. I'm hoping it's more or less for a potential, but he's good to me listening to some of his uh, music. But uh, he has the potential to delve that as deep as Andre 3000 in that regard. That's good. So okay, so you got so so let's recap. Your your four are who again? So I got uh Rakim, mm-hmm. Oz, Andre mm-hmm. two thousand, and Kendrick mm-hmm. Lamar. Okay, and I got I got the same three, but instead of Kendrick Lamar, I got Scarface. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, we, all right, look at we got two that similar taste. All right. <laughs> We got now, some, now I will. So now, let me now, ask now. You, on that same note, do you like any of the? Uh, because you got some old heads on your list. Um, mm-hmm. Do you like any of the the new stuff? Yeah, well, well, yes, yes, I do. And see, um, I do got a new, I do got a new schooler on my van. So I just go ahead to say it now. Of okay. course, you done heard me say the name before, Big Crip. Okay, like that's my like like. To me, I think he better than Kendrick. I think he better than J. Cole. I think he is that de facto leader of the new school that people just not really paying attention to. And mm-hmm. it's not it's not to take anything away from Kendrick or take anything away from Cole, but he has the technical ability to match with the content. And people feel like Crit built a a a solid underground following that somebody like a Scarface has done. You know, crit crit is he can he can tell stories and and he can he can he can rap about this he can rap about that you know and and he can produce as well you know so um, 
just just I'm thinking about it on my team as well. Like I know um I know three thousand can make beats, I know Nas can make beats, and I know Crick can make songs. Okay. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like even even thinking about that, like he's more than just a like like Crick can go in the studio and do everything. He can do the hook himself. If you want melody on the hook, he can he can sing. He can sing well enough to give you melody on the hook. He can kill the track. Like I'm hearing him I'm hearing him on uh the last Last song I heard him collab with was a song with him and Ti. He got Ti. He he got Ti. Like he's and and what one thing I I love about one uh, things I love about him Cole and and um, Kendrick and I because I think I think those three need to make an album together and go on tour. I would love to. I would love that. But what I love about them is they have their own style and they stay in their lane. They're not trying to sound or rap like anybody else. Other people are trying to rap like them. Like when I hear Crit, it's all originality. And it's and it's and I guess I guess I have a little more love to, for him being that southern that southern dude. And honestly, if I was a rapper, I think I would be big. I would. I would rap about the stuff Big Crit was rapping about because when I hear him, it, it make me feel like um it made me feel like it's a it's a regular person telling the stories that me and my friends can't tell because we not rappers, but he's telling it for us. Okay. I, I'm gonna have to check, you know, I I you know, I've gotta be the first to admit that I haven't heard of Big Crit. Uh no, mm-hmm. not that I haven't heard of him, but I haven't listened to his music. I have heard of him. So, right. um, you know, uh, so that you made a compelling argument, definitely to pick up that one and um, and go see what he all about. Uh, and uh, if, can you believe that we are halfway through a list and neither one of us have Biggie or Tupac? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because because and I, and I say that because we're we. Just from the just from all the conversations that that you and I have been engaged in, and just the vibe, the way we vibe, we're on a similar wavelength, okay. and we're not gonna pick somebody just because they're a martyr. We're not gonna pick somebody just because everybody else like them. Like, um, don't get it. I I'm more of I'm more on the Tupac side than Biggie side, but then I'm on the Biggie side and Tupac side because I I, I enjoy what both of them bring. But if we're talking about my personal favorite rappers. I'm not gonna let nobody tell me who I should like. Okay. You know, I think I think Shaw Rock from uh, fan, uh, Funky Four Plus One is one of the coldest female MCs ever. Mm-hmm. But I'm probably the only one who will say that. Right, right, right. And I and I ain't mad at you for that because uh, you know when I looked at my list, one of the things that was I had to just you know for that girl empowerment, you know, I had to throw MC Light in there. But the reality of things is that I just knew MC Light was going to be on my list anyway. Uh, right. the group that I grew up in, she had, uh, you know, came out with this edge that, um, you know, uh, you know, we hadn't seen before from, uh, you know, female rappers, female rappers. So I liked it, and um, and uh, so that she she got a personal, a feel to me. But then after that. It drops off for me. I don't have any other female rappers um, that uh, that I like so much that would make the list over just being a rapper. Period. You know. Right. Well, I mean, we, it, nobody can be mad at that, and that's the thing about this. What people have to realize is this is this seven is our personal list, so we can't be mad at how you feel. You know about about that with with the female MCs because, like, um, you know, I'm I'm a, how you feel about light is how I feel about Lauren. Okay. You know, but Lauren was a flash in the pan. Mm. Okay. So, but but MC Light had she has had the luxury of having longevity in a sense of still even being relevant now. So. Um, when it comes to when it comes to greatest of all time, you always gonna have that light versus Lauren um, debate. Okay. Now, this is a side side note. They just made me think about it though, because uh, I was listening to XM Radio one day and they had the, they had the debate: who's a better MC, Light or Latifah? Who you think? Light for me. Light, why? Uh, <clears throat> I guess. Um... 
I guess, you know, uh, light, uh, had that kind of, um, street edge that I just kind of liked in her rap. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Queen Latifah seemed more like uh, uh, somebody that was, um, you know, even though we knew she had uh, some edge on to her, she had this, uh, co um, you know, college bound, um, I'm super self uh, conscious on another level, uh, women empowerment thing that <coughs> said, um, it wasn't about rapping. It was about being a, a woman rapper. And MC Light had a, I'm coming after everybody. I'm not just want to be considered a rapper. I want to be, you know, I want to be considered the best rapper, not just a the best woman rapper. Right, right. And that right. had personal appeal to me, um, you know, uh, that I kind of just liked. And I stuck with that. No matter how much my ideology might have changed, um, you know, going forward. So that's why they they pretty close though, because I I got to give Queen her props. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I had that's something I never thought about. And when I was listening to that radio show, I think it was the Lord Lord Sear and um, the uh, Rude Jude and Lord Sear. So, um, but there's nothing. That, it's something I never really thought about. But it's that's a good. That's a good debate. That's a good debate because because Latifah had her best and Light had her best. That's a, I I would I would pay to see that. I would pay to see them go round for round, ball for ball. You know when they both if if we take them both back to their prime back in the era when Latifah was Latifah. So you know it it'll be nice. All right. So so they, your the the the, uh, the the game was small back then and they was all friends. Yeah, so yeah. I'm pretty sure it's some lost material out there. Y'all go ahead and pull it up. Somebody find it, and uh, I know, right? You know, find some things going on. You know, uh, that we might be a gem that we might be able to get a hold of, uh, because it was a tight community and they were all close friends. Right, right, right. So, all right. So we uh, so MC Light would be your fifth MC. Yeah. Um, what we at? Yeah, your fifth MC on your bus. Mm hmm. All right, so you got you got Nas, Rakim, three thousand, Kendrick, and Light, and I got I got um I got Nas, Rakim, three thousand, Scarface, and who I said um Big Crit, yeah Big Crit, Big Crit. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so um, <clears throat> give us one more. Black thought. Black thought. I've heard good things. I haven't ever listen to the music so <clears throat> what makes it relevant man the only rapper i have ever heard you all right so let me try to explain it like this you know how when you are listening to a rapper get into a verse like a verse that they really getting into and but it starts off kind of slow and it kind of builds into and it, and it go and it builds as it goes Black Thought is the only rapper I've ever heard who sounds like he's in the middle of his verse when he starts. So he he start with the bear on your back. Like he don't he don't give it to you. He's not he's not jugging it in easy. He just right, right, right. slicing you across your head like real quick. And another another complete MC. Okay. And put him on a track with anybody. Put him on a track with anybody. And tell me he can't hold his own. Like he can he can do it all, give you stories. He can I mean spit hot fire. Like hot fire, one of like he's he's one of the he's he's probably the most underrated MC of all time, if not one of. I mean, his it's just the the way he rhymes and the way he the way he gives it to you. It just is is otherworldly. And once again, he's in his own lane. He does what it does, and then when you couple that with with what the roots bring to it, like um. Quest Love is a genius too, but just if we just talking about just the just the raw MC rhyming ability, like people you can't mess with like I I put Black Thought against any rapper of all time. Okay. Any rapper. Okay. Um all right, so I gotta check you know I gotta check that out. That's something that I got two now on my list to check out. Um because I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna stay a fan. 
uh, but mm-hmm. and Black Thought. Okay. Um, I got another uh, somewhat predictable um, choice uh, in that they got their mainstream uh, or he's mainstream as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I picked them um, uh, before I tell you who it is. I picked them because uh, he seemed to stay true to himself and amass a certain level of success in the business um, and still kind of remain to be the same person that it seems um, <laughs> that he was from day one to now. Uh, but Jay Z, mm-hmm. and um, you know, not for the reasons why I think most people kind of look at some of this stuff, the blueprint, you know, all you know, you know, they, you know, I did like, you know, I liked his lyrics. I liked the way he was in love with his city. I, I like the way he was in love with New York. You know, what I'm saying I like the, you know, just the, you know, what he brings to the table. I like the fact that um, he has confidence to go after certain business uh, acumen that I know he got out the streets and he, you know, applied it to uh, everything else. And so just his overall career um, is something that I'm measuring up with his talent as well. You know, he's talented. uh, And so uh, he brought some extra to that talent. And so that's why he kind of made my list. Okay. Jay-Z. Jay-Z. He gets his props and he don't get his props, but and he gets his fair share. He gets, I think, the fair, the, some of the some of the lumps he get are are, are fair and some of them are not. Um, I, I think a lot of times a lot of people get too emotional when they're talking about Jay Z and they get too caught up in their emotion with Jay Z this and Jay Z that. Yeah, but some of your favorite rappers rap about dope too. So I mean, yeah, I mean, come know, on, yeah. Right. not rapping about nothing. Right, it, right. but uh, but but. Um, a uh, reasonable doubt is my favorite Jay Z album. My favorite Jay Z song is, and I uh, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't expect this, but The Evils. Okay, that's my favorite. I felt like Jay Z gave a good depiction of the game, and and how it how it turns you out, and 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 how it can corrupt you. Um, if you just go back and listen to it, I thought everything about that song was perfect, including the beats and, 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 and all that was, that was brought. And Jay-Z is another rapper whose storytelling ability gets overlooked by a lot of people who are so emotional that, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a Jay-Z fan. But like I tell you, I'm going to tell the truth when the truth needs to be told. And and when I say I'm not a fan, I'm I'm not saying that I don't like his music. I'm not. I'm, what I'm saying is I'm the the seven that I'm giving you in this bus. These the seven that I kind of like like really ride hard with, with the exception of Ti. Okay. You know, T, if we if we had eight, Ti would be personally in my bus because that's that's somebody that I've been riding with. But it's just like Jay Z. Jay Z is a it's a great. A great rapper. He technically sound like he don't get it. He don't get his his technical props either. He's technically sound. Um, I, I don't think he's as deep as he shows. Right. I, I think he could be a lot deeper in in what's and and what he's saying because I do think he has that. But at, you know, I can't make him do that. But um, mm-hmm. there it is. Yeah. No. I, is. I I you know I think that's a double edged sword with uh, Jay Z. Uh, that gets him, you know, it's one of those things where I think we spoke uh, about this. You either like him or you or you don't. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Um, there's no on the fence, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, you either like him or you don't. You either like the way he carry himself or you have you take exception with it. Um, but uh, so now that that was my pick. Was that was okay. he on your list too or no? No, no, no. He's not on my list. Um, and that was this Jay Z is what, number seven or six? Six. This is six for me. I got one. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because Black Thought was my six. Okay. Okay. All right. So my seven is is Lauren Hill. L Boogie is my seven. Okay. So I got I got you know I got I got to put her on the list. I just as a as an MC, I just think oh man, she just when I listen to her like 
and some vortex and, and some vortex and sweats i make tracks like i'm homeless rap all this with porgy and best capture yeah. your bounty like elliot ness and just like you know like lauren is lauren is like the classic 90s mc who embodied the spirit of the 80s, the soul of the 70s, the struggle of the 60s and the 50s, and, and her music, and just gave you that raw neo soul slash hip hop slash New York slash around the way girl slash conscious woman. Um, that 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 that, that vibe, the lyric, like lyrically, lyrically, she's another one. Like I put Lauren in her prime. I put Lauren in her prime against any MC, and I think she'll hold her own. If not, come out victorious in every battle that she's in, um, or if, if it comes to making songs and all the things here. Because that's that was that was. Let me get my words right. That was one of her strengths, making songs. Okay. You know, and, and I think I think a lot of people overlook that when they're talking about rappers. But once again, that that's why it needs to be laid out in criteria. You know, making songs matters. If we're just talking about if we're if we're talking about the greatest of all time, because you know, people listen to songs. People don't hear a lot of the freestyles and a lot of the ciphers and things. Even though I think they should. Yeah. Um, but I just L Boogie, man. She she got it. I give it to she her. She got it. She got the juice. Yeah, she did. I give you that one. That is, she she really uh, uh, brought some um, you know spiritual connection to the ancestor type stuff where they like well they gave the, the ancestors gave her a gift uh, <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. I vibe on that one. Um, and you know what? On that on that tip, I can uh, you you bring up such a good point that I believe my next one. This is my last one, number seven. Um, was blessed like this too from the ancestors of Q Tip. Um, okay. Q Tip. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well, okay. I'm glad you brought him up. I'm glad you brought him up because I've been wanting somebody to break Q Tip down for me because I've been, I've been listening. Like I, I'll go listen to a trial called Quest. I, I, I hear him and I hear Fife. I hear him and I hear Fife, and I like. You know, I'm leaning more toward toward Fife, but but help me help me get it because I I may not I need I need to be I need to be you know break help break it down for me. That, no, that's fair. You know, that's fair. Fife dog, uh, no doubt. You know, what I'm saying like it's uh, lyrically. You know, what I'm saying the 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 rhymes, the concepts, the storytelling, uh, it's mm. all there, and it's probably fair to say that uh, he was the energy source and. Q, uh, you know, last door to that light, you know what I'm saying, to get some, you know, uh, inspiration, rhyme, storytelling ability uh, to, um, uh, I just, it, this would probably boil down to me in, in terms of, of Q-Tip uh, not wanting to uh, follow the leader, but be a leader and have the confidence to, um, uh, say I can take this somewhere else. You can't because of this ability, um, you know. So uh, and probably do it on his own terms. So there was just a. It's one of those things where it's a personal thing. You sit there, you listen uh, to his rhymes, and you say, okay, um, you know, I can dig where he coming from. But Five Dog is up there. That he they they they. they you can never just right. Uh, right. I'm gonna be because I, I and I know a lot of people probably gonna get on me for this, but hey, man, I I didn't know like I didn't listen to the tribe coming up because I mean nobody around me. I didn't I didn't know anybody who listened to a tribe called Quest. You know, if it wasn't a ball MJG, if it wasn't Field Mob, UGK, Outkast, Scarface, and stuff like that. You know, we in the, we in Tallahassee, Florida. Like I even though people here did listen to the tribe. I didn't know nobody listened to Tribe, so I didn't know about Tribe coming up. So by the time I got into Tribe, you know, I'm I heard it, and I heard Fife Dog, then I heard everybody talking about Q-Tip, but I heard Fife Dog, and I was like, "Am I the only one who listening to this?" <laughs> no, that's true. So it's safe to say Q-Tip had those marketable. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I get that. I do get that. Yeah, yeah, but now, now, um, I guess what I what I should be asking you personally, what what appealed to you about Q Tip that that make you put him on your list? 
Yeah, that kind of dungeon type, uh, you know, bohemian, uh, you know, go with the flow, spirituality type things that, um, you know, I come from a place, but it's not representative of my um, uh, of my art. And I can let my art be what it is unapologetically. He just carried okay. himself that way, and it's a, it, 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 it was appealing um, to uh, someone like me at a time where uh, you know you're supposed to. You, I was young when I was listening to the Tribe. You know, you talk about I wasn't here in Florida, and so up north at all the little underground places, Tribe Called Quest was. You know, mm-hmm. that's who you went to go see. They was playing the, you know, the dungeon places. You know, what I'm saying like you know, right. Uh, abandoned building type thing and it brought you back towards this has got to be for the pure love of the art <laughs> it's not just because i want to get out here and um, make millions and be uh, uh, my business is everybody else's business type of celebrity it right. wasn't about that at least from my viewpoint so um in that respect um you know q just he, he personified that uh, attitude more than five, and this this could be just a personality thing. Right, right. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely, I can see the appeal. You know, when it when it comes to that, uh, if we want to talk about a pure marketing standpoint and that PR part, I mean, I that's that's no, that's not even. If anybody argues that, I don't know what you what you looking at, but. <laughs> It's like, um, you know, I'm, and I'm still, and I'm still learning more and more and more about Tribe. Um, what, what is the name of this new album they put out? I've been like, I Google, and it, it's not telling me the name of the new album. And I feel bad because I don't know that. I think it's a number, right? It's like six or something like that. Hold on, let me get, let me. Because uh, I, I go, I, I Google and I get confused because I really don't know what I'm looking at. Matter of fact, I downloaded and only listened. To, uh, that one track called, I heard was hard. It, it was. Uh, it's called "We Got It From Here." Thank you. We got it from here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for something. Thank you for your. Thank you for your time. We got okay. it from here for your time. Okay, that's the whole. Okay, because I I thought I thought somebody was saying that. I, okay, that's the <laughs> name of the album. We got it from here. Thank you for. Okay, I didn't know. Thanks, somebody. Was, I thought somebody was telling them thank you or something. Okay. Oh no! Thank you for your service. We got okay. it from here. Thank you for your service. So okay. I listened, I downloaded it, and listened to about three or four songs. Mm-hmm. So have you heard anything from it? I've heard. I've heard that one track with that real hard beat. Uh, I can't think of yeah. the name of, it, but I, I I like that. I'm jamming off that. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, it, now, it, now that I know the title, I can go listen to it now. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, the, you know, we got all these personal and largely, um, you know, we didn't have too many new people, none of these new faces in the game on the list, uh, not right. that even deserve to be on a grit list, according to Nas, you know what I'm saying? You, you can't be the greatest of all time when, uh, you know, the, the art form is, is still in this infancy like it is, uh, you know, it, you know, and some of these careers are still ongoing. Uh, so it, you can't judge a person uh, well, right in the middle of their career, but you know what were you gonna say? Well, no, I mean I agree because think think about it like this. All right, let's well let's take let's take a medium like the NBA, right? And let's take let's say the NBA has been in 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 existence thirty years because well because let's say hip let's let's give hip hop seventy six, let's give it nineteen seventy six. So seventy six. Right. 86, 96, 2006, 2016. So we're talking about 40 years. So yeah. let's look at let's look at only 40 years of history of the NBA. Yeah. So you mean to tell me in 40 years we can say, well, this is def- definitely the greatest it's that this art form mm-hmm. can produce ever. Like, no, yeah. you, you can't say that because if you look at the first 40 years of the NBA and then look at it now, look how many records. Like, in sports now, records get broken every new year like a record that you think won't be broken gets broken right. it's, i'm talking about smashed mm-hmm. and then then you like well nobody will break that and then somebody come and smash that so it's the same thing with hip-hop even though it's a little it's a little more sub- subjective but same thing with hip-hop it's it is i do agree because i've always felt that it's too young to have a definitive top mc but the arguments are fun yeah 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, and we got to evaluate everybody that's out now. And, uh, you know, something that we're, we always transition the conversation into is their impact on culture. Uh, mm-hmm. you, know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's a big part of, you know, why we got these personal favorites in the first place, right? Uh, they right. appealed to us, their music, what they were putting out at the time, appealed uh, to us uh, on a very personal level. We thought they was talking to us or at least singing uh, or rapping about something to every, letting everybody know our story because we were probably too, um, you know, uh, afraid to tell it in that medium or on that level. Uh, and they got really creative with it too. You know what I'm saying? They right. put, you know, a beat behind it, a hook and, you know, everything else. And they, you know, uh, really showed off their talent. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, too young to, to say, you know, what's, you know, what this industry, what this medium of music or genre of music is going to produce uh, in terms of its future as well. But... I mean- yeah, you you, you never know. You never know. You never know, uh, but you would agree that we are in a downtime in terms of uh, hip hop or rap. Would you? Yes, yes, yes. We are uh, on the, especially on the mainstream level. We are in a down. We are in a downtime because when rappers like the Lil Yachty, whatever, uh, Kodak Black, whatever these, like when when that type of rap even gets airtime like consistent play like that that's when we that's when we know we're we're in the downtime i mean we had because we have great music out there there's i'm not gonna sit there and let let nobody tell me that the music ain't there like we have great music there but it's 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 these guys are are out there so we do have a downtime now i will say we've had bad music in the past but it's it's more of now this there's no balance in the game and since there's no balance this music is more so here it is out on the forefront rather than just being something that that could be balanced out by like uh you know let's just be real mc hammer wasn't no good rapper but mc rammer did mc hammer did rap better than these guys but he was a performer because it became about being the you know having an all performance and right uh, you know putting on the show now I went to uh, my my very first concert I went to was MC Hammer. All right, who it was it? Was MC Hammer, Boys to Men, and somebody else? It was a great concert, but MC when MC Hammer came out, it was he put he did put the show on, and I and I, and I do get wow. that aspect. But the biggest the biggest the biggest problem because when you don't control something, you can't you can't dictate what happens within it. But the right. one of the biggest issues is we don't have balance, but we as consumers we don't seek balance either like we because we've we've gotten so used to the music being handed to us now mm-hmm. we're in a situation where we have to go find our artists like that's how i found Sarah. So rock you know i'm i'm just listening going through youtube and i saw um she had a she had a song called the who with david banner and um the first verse david banner is um telling a little story about uh, Patrice Lumumba, and then I go through and I listen to the whole song, and I like that. So, okay, now what else does Saw Rock have? And I go and I go listen, and I go listen. I'm like, well, dang, like Saw Rock, one of the coldest MCs ever to me. Like, I think like Saw Rock, she she one of them leading female MCs right now, and not just leading female MCs. She one of the coldest MCs out to me right now. Um, Big Pun Son, you you heard me say this before. Big yeah. Pun Son is cool, okay. bad. He's bad. He's bad. You know, um, like so a legend like Immortal Technique. Okay. Like think about it. people don't even when when once again when we put the list together, people don't put Immortal Technique on the list, but put Immortal Technique in a in a cipher with your favorite rapper and see if your favorite rapper won't go home looking stupid. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's and that's important. Um, so, you know, in that respect, you know, what, how, how do you think during these lean years, because that's what we can call them, you know, they, you know, the content, you just, just like you said, that the, the consumers are not shaping or guiding, um, you know, uh, this and there's a balance that has to be struck there between the artists being that not being able to be stifled uh, in their uh, art form, 
and uh, and also uh, uh, is there a social component here that uh, you know should we worry about it as much or should we put uh, rapping hip hop that whole culture into a, a sub set of our culture and say then um, you know here's the level at which we respect it in terms of how it impacts our our culture because well, I, between the between the two of us you know um, you know we got some artists that didn't necessarily raise the level of consciousness in our community right right I mean we have to we have to uh, be honest about the the impact that hip hop has on us as far as social engineering. Okay. I mean, we, we we have to because um, uh, I forgot what I was watching, but uh, the the comment was made. I think I I think when the Rodney King situation happened, you know, fight the power, and songs like that were out. Or, or, or like late eighties, early nineties, when Public Enemy was in the forefront, because um, you know NWA was a counter to Public Enemy, and just looking at those dynamics there, like uh, people, people like to praise NWA, but they don't really like to look at the, the the damage that that group has done as well. You know, they opened the door for for a lot of negative negativity in the in the community. Yeah, they were speaking the, the the voice of the streets but a lot of other that a lot of a lot of other stuff came with that but the social impact that, that hip-hop has has to be taken serious it has to be analyzed um you learn like i'm keep saying it, we learn through pictures and sound we learn through pictures and sound repetition um a song because think about it you want you a song come on the radio you think it's the stupidest song you ever heard in your life but let's say um you like to listen to the radio though and you hate this particular song, but this particular song is in the rotation of all the other stuff that's that's played. And by day forty, that song ain't that stupid. It's just funny now. Mm -hmm. And by day eighty, you singing the lyrics in the song, and you have been totally desens desensitized. And now you are making excuses for the impact of of it. Because I mean, I mean, we black people, we always get in situations where we're we're trying to defend the things that are harmful to us because we've grown accustomed to them and we and we like them now and and we've accepted them but it's it's like we we have to be able to see the bigger picture and and really understand that hip hop is a hip hop is a force it's an energy force that can either be used for good or bad and right now it's been used for more bad than good especially when it comes to the black community okay so do you see in our future uh in terms of uh, music, um, medium, rap, uh, hip hop, even pop culture now has an impact on the um, black community. Um, <clears throat> uh, because basically, uh, and we have to clarify this, um, you know, through the entertainment venues or medium, <clears throat> that's how white culture uh, tends to judge uh, our reality over here. Right, right. So, right. <clears throat> our impact isn't necessarily that we are uh, because I wasn't listening to <clears throat> excuse me I wasn't listening to um, Easy E Ice Cube uh, you know uh, NWA at the time uh, like I was living in their reality um, I was living I was listening to them like hey that was that's a whole, that, they still in the United States. That's in the United States. That's not a third world country. That's not a, uh, you know, like a, if you start, if you matched up what Ice Cube and them were wa rapping about at the time with what the American propaganda machine <clears throat> was putting out about um, how good things were, that was a clear juxtaposition of you know if something somebody wasn't telling the truth so was it them not yeah. telling the truth in you know in their <clears throat> well, entertainment song or was it well the see even that's that's the that's the i guess you could say the like you said the juxtaposition of it because nwa told the truth at the same time while still 
telling as or, or creating aspects or helping to create lanes that weren't necessarily the truth or over exaggerated over exaggerated truths that they both had impacts because uh, I, I think I think Cube is one of the greatest of all time uh, simply because Cube Cube was the conscious aspect of NWA right when right. Cube left when Cube left that 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 left the group. <laughs> you know, Q, like, all right, like, let's just let's just be real, like, and and nothing, and not to take anything away from MC Ren because he's one of the ones that don't get props because MC Ren was that other writer in the group he that was, people people right. look. That's, that's right. And MC Ren, MC Ren, look, the last time I you know uh, on the Chronic 2001, it was a song toward the end of the end, end of the album. And MC Ren ripped that thing, so he can he can he got it. Ren got the juice, but it's like Q was. Q was that battery pack for NWA in that in that conscious thought, that conscious voice. And so you can never say that NWA didn't bring the reality of what was going on in the streets to us. That happened. But as uh, I, like you were talking earlier, it's that double-edged sword, though. Mm -hmm. And both aspects have to be recognized, especially if we're talking about us really breaking down our own culture and really reclaiming our culture and using our culture to empower us rather than just being... Uh, bystanders who ex like we create the culture, but we experiencing it through a bystander position, though. Right, right, exactly. You know, um, and uh, you know, yeah, and you're right. You know, what I'm saying because again, you know, just to reiterate that, you know, uh, you know, Ice Cube and them were talking, but they weren't talking from my neighborhood. But they did seem to have a formula uh, for getting that message out there. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of looked at them and I said, you know, uh, uh, I like the fact that they did not uh, buckle under. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, especially with the F the police stuff right. and all that. You know what I'm saying? I like the fact that they didn't buckle under that type of uh, pressure because you know that the uh, system uh, creates people who can be uh, enveloped into that uh, ideology uh, that. Oh, you might come out hard, but we're gonna soften you up eventually, and you're gonna, you know, you know, this is where we're gonna, we, you're gonna be our messages, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's 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 funny you say that because I see we see the butt breaking happening all the time <laughs> because because it's like I'm sorry, I don't want my ice, I don't I don't want my ice cube being being the friendly ice cube that that happy go lucky with all white people and stuff i don't want that ice cube i want my ice cube to be i want the i want the the high learning ice cube that's what i want mm -hmm. you know and it, and that ice that's not saying that ice cube is going to go out and terrorize white societies that both that ice cube know what's going on and that ice cube is not taking his, his eyes off the prize but at the same time because and, and people people mistake militants for hate and militants and hate ain't the same thing. Militants has has a lot to do with people really understanding what's going on and not taking their eyes off the ball. And yes, I I I don't hate white people, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not call you on your stuff either. Exactly, you know. And here I'll even take that a step further. Uh, you know, uh, I have uh, you know started thinking uh, very collectively. You know, uh, uh, groups. You know, just as a collective, and that doesn't mean I'm generalizing, but I'm saying there's a collective impact that is very hard to ignore. And so, collectively, I'm, you know, the consciousness of white people is not my responsibility to raise. You know, I right. wouldn't even right. uh, begin to, um, uh, you know, tackle that because I have a group of people over here that I have an ancestral allegiance to. Uh, that uh, you know that need my uh, that need my help, and so raising their consciousness level is more important. Right, right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so um, you know those things that are set up for uh, uh, with the uh, caveat that they are there for the black community, but they're actually for um, you know for the, the other groups to learn about us. <laughs> uh, right. So, <laughs> I, 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 see, I, I, but because you know, um, you know, we were having we were having conversations and groups discussions earlier, and 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 I, I, I wish that I wish what you just said was said then, because all right, because we have to. 
historical perspective is a mug, man. And being able to see how things have turned out in the past, whether it was for us or against us, is big. So um, ha having that historical perspective, having the understanding of the negative impact that Im imagery and, and propaganda and, and uh, just just information put out about a certain people especially when i control the vehicle that's putting this information out if i want to control this certain narrative like white people white people are more destructive to black people but they literally have the nerve to walk around being afraid of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the narrative taught them that and the narrative have also taught us to be afraid of us because we get the same we get those same messages white people get so you see a group of black people walking down the street they got they they got the dreads in their head they pants sagging some you know and you automatically get on guard yeah like it's not it's not like like you see a group of white boys walking down the street you don't think twice you see a group of black boys walking down the street. You get on call. Oh my God! I wonder what they're doing. That group of th I bet you they finna do something bad. And it's like, really? Like, let's look at the historical mm -hmm. stack up on this. But it's like being careful. That's why I keep saying it. You know, with our with our music, um, I really think we should abandon right now. We should abandon like the whole mainstream thing. Like, just yeah. abandon it and and so support the independent artists, support the underground artists, and. And that way we, we can because we, we can hold them more accountable to what they're doing rather than this this big machine. But we don't the machine needs us. We don't need the machine. Right. And that's one thing we need to understand, like the the industry needs people like we're the battery packs for the machines, just like the scene in The Matrix when when uh, Neo bust out of that, that that encapsulation and found out that, hey, man, if all of us weren't in here and our energy weren't being drained, the system can't work. So we're the battery packs for this for this system. But they've like you said, they've studied us for so long and they know us. They got they got they have the psychology of black people broken down to a T. They know how to keep us where they have us. Yeah, yeah, and we and uh, like good soldiers <laughs> uh, for the system, we we get in line um, because you know we know that. Um, you know, certain uh, uh, historical events and things have taken place that would tell us otherwise um, that we have to just start thinking on a different um, a strategic level to, um, you know, you know, turn this around. Um, but, you know, even with that said, there needs to be a uh, way with in which, you know, like you said, we can if we pull all our money out of mainstream or we pull all our energy away from the mainstream, then that will cultivate underground music and we can hold those artists more accountable to their social message. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I truly believe that uh, there's our progress is forward moving. I don't believe that we're going to uh, go backwards. We're just going to continue to move, um, to move forward. Um, so we have to have learned from a little bit of history how to strategize going forward and I th because we would end up building the same elitist system within our own communities if we go forward with the way with the uh, blueprint in which uh, we've been fed all this time which I'm afraid that we'll do I hear it now when I, I see a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, uh, the, the the dangers of rap and the dangers of they put it on a different economical term. Uh, yeah, like uh, rap and hip hop. Right, you know what I'm saying, and that you say, oh, but that's about money, and and you realize, yeah, that's what it's about with uh, them, and we'll end up having the haves and the have-nots within our own communities. Uh, and that same judgmental uh, thing where, oh, this music, you know, we get, we're we censoring things. So we well, need to be aware of that. Yeah. Well, we, and we've, we've, we've had that in the past. We've had that between the North and the South. Like when the South first start, first start coming up and cause Pimp C was one of the, one of the main vocal opponents, um, mm -hmm. you know, let people know we, we make country rap tunes in the South. And right. so now, you know, down here, that's what we say. We listen to country rap tunes because mm -hmm. um, because that was going on. But but 
Yeah. See, even in that, it, it it is to me. It was people being sour because um, it was it was a lot of New York people saying that. So it was a lot of New York people being sour that New York went on top no more. Mm -hmm. But it's like now we're seeing that hip hop hip hop has to take its course because it, it New York had its run, the West Coast had its run, the the Midwest has its run now. The, the difference is, but the Southern run is, the Southern run is the longest run. But what it is, is the music came home. Mm -hmm. The well, music I, came, I oh, mean, it did. Right there, you know, said that, you know, the, the beat started like, there. <laughs> like, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't have hip hop if you didn't have Southern music. Like, Southern music is the foundation of all American art forms. Like that yeah. southern, like those slave, those slave narratives and those Negro spirituals are the foundation. And then you have the the muddy waters and the bluegrass and all all those uh, the blues and in the in the in the deep down south jazz. That's where that's where a lot of this stuff come to. And it, the music really just came home. But that's not to say that it won't flourish again throughout throughout the uh, the different regions. But the music, to me, the music came home. Now it um, it just. It's it's not it's not the greatest time in that the music came home at the same time at the height of the corporate takeover. Right. So so that's when we find a little half wit rappers who I just want to go. I just got the toe and my mama at the door and I say take that toe. You know you got you got that and everybody oh man you heard that like um they got this new young mom young ma young mom whatever her name is and mm -hmm. and uh, everybody like she's the hottest in the game and I I'm sorry I'm listening to. Her. I, I sit down and listen, and I'm like, okay, I'm waiting on the hotness. I'm, I'm waiting on the hotness. When is the hotness going to hit me? Still waiting. <laughs> yeah. And, and not, not to trash her, but it's like, it's like um, we're at a state now where we don't expect greatness. We just take what they give us. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a very good point. And, um, you know, I obviously the presentation is everything for me, uh, you know, uh, in terms of when you're getting ready to put out a product uh, and rapping, that's, you know, mainstream rapping and all kind of thing. It's a product uh, that you're trying to sell um, to me. And so when I look at Young M.A., you know, uh, the product she's selling is I figure I'm not her audience in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I do have to look at some of the psychological uh, things that are going on there uh, in terms of how her rap is developed, how she's developed as an individual uh, and as a person. Um, and uh, and I know rap is supposed to be all about metaphors and, uh, you know, uh, assemblies and, you know, wordsmithing and um, all that. But for the life of me, I, I, I cannot understand how a born woman is, is standing there talking about being deep throated, I, I really just um, you throwing me off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from a you know a a genre of music that started with being real, like we talking about real stuff. You know what I'm saying? Playing music and uh, you know uh, rapping on the street corner, break dance and blah blah blah. To some uh, you taking me on your uh, your personal experience uh <laughs> yeah, i mean i, I mean I, I get you because it is it's all right so because you know you know when we when we tread here we got to we got to <laughs> be careful how we say things because people people we're in the age of i have to be offended now but it, it is it is no like you what, said, i don't even if i tell you that I'm not, I'm not trying to offend you. But people go, I have to be offended because I don't know why, but I have to, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I mean, it's, it's, all right. She's appealing to a certain type of artist, but I, I, I from what I've observed, even for that type of artist she's appealing to, she's trying too hard. Like she's trying to be, she, it, it, it seems as if she's trying to make some kind of statement that don't really need to be made. And okay, you like girls. Cool. You're not the first and you won't be the last. Nah, nope. That's right. So 
it, it's like trying to do something new on top of something new. You know? Yeah, like like you like like she like girls way more than any other body that like girls, and she's the <laughs> she's the greatest example of how you're supposed to like girls. Like girls, yeah. Oh no, nope. you know, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, I, 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 some videos were shared. She probably was a little younger when she did them, but I don't really know. But she was going in talking about, so you are not real lesbians in this life. She putting the, she made the criteria for lesbianism. Right. I'm like, right. Okay, okay, whatever. Yeah, the, I, well, you know, here's the thing. You know, I don't have any input into that, you know. Um, right. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I want to chop it up to um, that is one of those things where I just probably cannot relate the same way I can relate to some of the artists that, you know, I named on my list and that we talked about so far, there is nothing there that I can even um, uh, relate to age wise, uh, sexual orientation wise, nothing. Uh, and um, and um, am, I, if, am I correct? She is uh, uh, Latino. I have no idea. I, I really I really didn't even I, I don't know. Um, and so then also you couple that with the fact that there is no level of consciousness there. Yeah, no you can, level you can see, you can see, you still can see it. Still be the little Wayne of 20, 25 right. talking about I've never experienced racism. But, but see, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like he he telling the blatant lie. Like go back and listen to his music. Go back and listen to interviews. Go back and just like Lil Wayne, you've been on camera since '98, and you really gonna tell us something like that? And you grew up in Holly Grove portion of New Orleans, and I know too many folk from New Orleans who grew up around there. So you're not gonna tell me that you ain't never experienced no type of racism in your life, and you're not gonna sit here and tell me that just because. You are a black person who's amassed riches in your life. That that means that racism don't exist. That's stupid. That's that's just plain stupid for you to say that. Because guess what? It was millionaires. It was black millionaires in the 1700s. It was black millionaires in the 1800s. It was black millionaires in the 1900s. And racism still existed. Now, so don't sit here and tell me that because I've amassed a million dollars. Man, you lying and you cooning. And you you know you cooning for the white folk, and guess what? Like I'm gonna keep telling y'all, the white folks still don't like you. Well, that's <laughs> you couldn't be more wrong. I mean, more right. You know what I'm saying? And that message right there. Uh, but that's what young M.A. personifies right now. Little Wayne never had any level of consciousness that could speak to anything, uh, it, you know, through his uh, music. Uh, so he is a direct result of that system. Uh, that will say, oh, I'm going to have your mainstream artists out here, um, you know, telling you that you can achieve out of oppression, <laughs> you know, um, you know, <laughs> it, I mean, it's not what Little Wayne's saying. He's saying once you make so much money, you don't even see it. So you can, we can achieve out of oppression, forget everybody else. Young M.A. is on that same, you know. She, but see, I mean, but but that, that just that just goes to ignorance. I mean, like. Like, bro, if they want you, they'll, they'll take you out. Yes, like, we still, we still questioning Johnny Cochran's death. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at, oh, they love OJ. They love OJ way more than they love you. And look at him. Right. Right. Like, stop, stop that. <laughs> but see, once again, you know, when you got when you got a person like that that's in the spotlight, that's using the medium like hip hop, and this is the message that he's giving out. He's giving out a false narrative. To our kids and our kids would need to really realize um like like even i, I guess like um uh, like when, when me and my mom been talking she she tired of me with this uh white people don't like black people talk she tired of me saying but it's like it's the truth though like like we have to we have to stop stop dancing around and stop compartmentalizing our individual interactions with specific white people or or, or this you know because it's like that's just like all right, I know drug dealers, but I don't endorse endorse drug dealing. Mm -hmm. So, and it, and it's the same thing. We we we're we're trying to, we're trying our best to exist as as peacefully as possible in an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. and that's impossible. Yeah, you are you are further damaging yourself and your psyche trying to trying to find your place of solace in an abusive relationship, it's not going to work. 
and you're going to do nothing but go crazier and crazier and crazier and that's and that's one of the reasons why we're still here like think about it. like we don't we created this medium and we don't we we don't even control it it right. controls us and the people who don't like us control it right mm -hmm. so so i mean the that's what's seen as okay well this is the new hit they they determine what the new hits are that that's how macklemore wins uh grammys and things like that no that's that's how nas and tupac don't like i and i want and i want people to the grammys do not it's not the 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 standard for yes. black music the, and i'm gonna say this again we need to I wish I wish black artists would just not show up to stuff like that. The Grammys is not the meat. It doesn't. It 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 is not the end all be all. Of letting us know that we've made it. If Tupac don't have no Grammy, Nas don't have no Grammy, and a lot of our other greatest rappers don't have no Grammy, the Grammy don't matter. That's not a representation of what we produce, music, right? And our right. and our contributions uh, to it the doesn't. industry. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because we we definitely. Uh, that's an inside out game meaning we was on the ones we were supporting it uh on the outside being a fan and we were supporting it in the inside with our contributions uh as far back as uh you know we can uh date it to um that's for sure so uh, i agree i agree wholeheartedly um so uh man we took that discussion to um a higher level yeah <laughs> uh but still you know uh you know made it relevant um because um as we wrap up here i just want to um you know point out that um we uh have our uh 12 codes of conduct and um rather than um push them out through a medium that uh, would stifle uh, the artist uh, by having them, you know, kind of limited in what they can rap about. Uh, we rather push those out to our community who we're hoping will produce artists that, uh, you know, will encompass those 12 uh, codes of conduct within their music. So, uh, you know, in that respect, we're going to let hip hop, to me, in my opinion, I think we should let hip hop and rap do what it's going to do, play out like it's going to play uh, and, and tackle our communities that are producing and what, how we nurture our next generation will dictate how our next generation of music socially impacts right. the black community. Because... Um the music is supposed to reflect the culture and the culture should reflect the music, but the music should reflect the culture more because the music comes from the people that's within the culture. And, um, it's a, I, when we reclaim our minds and our spirits back, that's when we'll, that's when the tides will turn in this music. That's when we will get the back, get back to, uh, making sure that our music on all levels is uplifting and empowering and we won't have to uh, make do with the situation. We won't have to, to deal with the less of the two evils or just try to make the best of this situation because, I mean, I understand that's where we are, but that's unfortunate that we have to make the best of where we are. You know, we don't, we, we shouldn't have to choose. Uh, um, um, I know we were talking earlier and then we were we were talking about J. Cole and um because you know people are, are crazy, crazy, crazy about J. Cole right now. And I, I think I you know I understand why because to me to me J. Cole is one of those rappers who twenty years from now we're gonna talk about how we felt him and how we still rock with J. Cole because you feel his music. His music touches your soul. Like Big Creek has a line, if if it don't touch my soul, then I can't listen to it. I I personally think J. Cole music touches people's soul because J. Cole, he's the he's speaking from that regular person's voice. He he's saying what's in my head. He's saying what's in your head. He's saying what's in our friend's head. Now it's he may not he's He's he doesn't have the technical aspects and all those things that he just say it. He's going there and just say it. But it's like he's gonna be one of the few that be like, you know what? Like people really, really, really 
feel him but that's what we need to get back to uh, i brought him up and i'm saying it because he's one of the, the 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 new school people that people really feel like tupac is one of the old school people that that people really really feel like but it's like when we get back to having our an abundance of our artists that people really feel i think that's when we start seeing things change and not just not saying that as if j cole is the next coming but to me i think that's one of his greatest attributes or if not his greatest attribute is he can capture the hearts of the people and when we are we're capturing when we once again when we claim our minds and our souls and our spirit the thing's gonna change um I, and i want to say this too um because you talked about the, the, the codes of social engineering y'all can go to Go to uh, visit www.pactsinc, click on the tab that say codes, and y'all can see what we're talking about. But our uh, codes, social engineering, because we got to give our plugs real quick. So, you yeah. know, we got to shout our people out. So, PACS, www.pactsinc.org, and you can find out more about the social engineering codes. Um, also, um, Y'all support this, the Independence Day project. Our brother, Professor Carlton Jones, is his project, his brainchild. Well, he, he's um, giving us a vision of what Black America could be if we work toward and we build our independent Black community. So make sure y'all go to www.wauwhataboutus.com for more information. And the last one is uh, go to my, check out my own shows with Giants uh, website. Uh, my blog, also my YouTube channel, YouTube, go to youtube.com backslash on the shoulders one, but on the shoulders of giants is a historical, um, it's a historical blog and a blog and book series that, uh, displays the, um, displays the heroes of the African diaspora. So you can, you can learn more at www.ontheshoulders1. That's on the shows, the number one.com. And that way you could be able to support the things that we have going on. www.pactsinc.org. www.wauwhataboutus.com and www.ontheshoulders1.com. Check them out. All right. That's awesome. That's all. Um, elevate together. Y'all get that. We got an app, app December the 25th on the show. Yes. Science, uh, coming yes. right to your phone. So no, Hey, that's one of the, uh, social codes, uh, of engineering. Know yourself, learn a little bit of history. Yep. Yeah, go check out that app. Uh, yep. also those, you, those, uh, listen, this is a personal, um, experience or personal testimony here. Uh, I sit back and watch YouTube and the small, um, you know, uh, video clips that you have on YouTube uh, for On the Shoulders of Giants are uh, phenomenal as well. Um, great way to just say, you, you know, y'all on YouTube all the time. I know you are. Mm -hmm. um, and go check out uh, some of that information. Um, uh, a little bit of day uh, takes us a long way in terms of knowledge. Yeah. So y'all go check out Joseph Ward, On the Shoulders of Giants. That's a uh, all today for Black to Hip Hop. We look forward to seeing you all again real soon. Peace and love. Hip Hop is bigger than hip hop.